Well, hello and welcome back to Venezuela in Focus. This is the first week of August and a lot has happened in Venezuela. My name is Oscar Schlenker. My name is Roberto Hung and we will see what's happening right now at this moment concerning Venezuela issues. Current events in English. So, a lot has happened uh, throughout July. We didn't have a show in July. And this first week of August has been very eventful here in Venezuela. Well, every day you can't expect, you know, you, you wake up in the morning, you see the news, and you see, I can't believe what's going on in here. Well, yesterday, two days ago, we see that there's a meeting in a group of Lima, the Lima group, again, uh, discussing what's going on in Venezuela. We more had, than 60 uh, nations, more than 60 nations got together in Peru, in Lima, and uh, the security advisor for the U.S., John Bolton, was there, and he made some interesting announcements. Well, he mentioned this important uh, words, the, the speech of uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. It was exactly 1910. April 23rd, if I don't, you know, uh, forget. And he was uh, during this um, speech that was delivered at uh, the University of Sorbonne in Paris. It was called the citizenship in a republic. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about the men in the arena. Mm -hmm. I had some, uh, I had a paper about it. It is really interesting because more or less what he says is, the important is this guy, the man in the arena. It's not the one that points out, you know, you can do it this way or that way. Because the one who's there, you know, with the blood, with the sweat, with the dust, he's the one, you know, that shares the victory or the defeat. It's not, you know, that, that guy that always talking and talking and talking and, you know, well, okay, we'll, we talk, but you don't act. And even though he didn't mention it in this speech, the symbolism, it, well, it wasn't even symbolism. It was very direct that who he was referring to Guaido. as the man in the arena in Venezuela is Juan, Juan Guaido. Guaido. So they're putting all their eggs in the basket with uh, Juan Guaido. Uh, how do you think Juan Guaido is faring up politically in the situation that we're living right now well, in Venezuela? Historically, the guy who's in the arena at that moment, you don't have to assume that responsibility. Probably two, three years ago that nobody knew about him. And well, all of a sudden, it comes, you know, 1919, 2019, and Juan Guaido, January 5th, January the 10th, and well, he's the president of the National Assembly. We were talking about that and why he assumes he's not elected as a president, but he assumed as a president of the National Assembly. And because of, you know, the lack of presidency, he assumes that, that, that As mission. As the Constitution states here in Venezuela. But it's interesting. We have seen a lot of changes. There's a lot of frustration here in Venezuela from uh, the more, most radical groups in the opposition because they want things now. They want change now. And they see it so close. Uh, uh, but uh, a lot of them say, and with good reasons, too, and good uh, arguments, that there must be more action. Uh, however, it's not that easy, is it's not. It's not. And we almost forgetting that like two, three weeks ago, well, two weeks, well, the days go fast, you know, we approved again El Tiar. It's a treaty yeah. of, uh, in English, how it will be? We're, oh, my goodness. We're going to have to Google that. But, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, hey, uh, I'll ask our editor to put it in English underneath. But Tiar is Tratado Interamericano. De, 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 de apoyo de, um, it's a reciprocal support system uh, in, within the OAS uh, that uh, other countries can... You know, to uh, help the help. countries within the, the, the Latin America continent in case of invasion or, you know, any, any yes, invasion of uh, foreign... Uh, foreign invasion. invasion. Or, and let me, let me just add something here because uh, we didn't talk about that OAS meeting, uh, the General Assembly of the OAS in, in July. Uh, I was there in Medellin, Colombia, and it was interesting to see how this is the first General Assembly where the Venezuelan government... Uh, is not there because they left 
the OAS. But, but not but even the representation? No, the design. representation of Guaido was sworn in, which is Gustavo Tarre, uh -huh. uh, as, as the representative of Venezuela uh, in the OAS. But that's uh, one of Juan Guaido's men and not uh, the Chavismo's uh, um, person or or diplomat diplomat uh but uh it, it was very interesting because in other general assemblies of the organization of america i forgot States, i forgot you were there and what did you you know feel it was very different because i usually go to these general assemblies uh representing um civil society with my ngo uh but in other events there's always a presence of chavismo in all the or all the forums and events protesting Cubans and Venezuelans from the Chavismo. They're always there protesting. And this year there None. was nothing. All the forums could be done. What? Yeah. There's criticism and everything that arises from these forums, but there wasn't like sabotage of these forums. And it was a much because more it, peaceful. Because assembly. it will be recognizing the, Oh, yeah, la OEA, the yeah, OAS. Yeah, it would be recognizing them, and they, the Chavismo does not recognize oh, the OAS anymore. But more or less, interesting. Though. More or less, it's the same that happens with the TR, let's say, <laughs> because yeah. I don't I don't know how it's said. It's called in, in English that I'm the government, up, all right, because the, uh, what happens is that the regime, you know, try to get getting out of this international treaty system. They did it with the uh, Inter-American uh, Treaty of Human Rights and the system of human rights. Also, the, the entire uh, uh, Inter-American, the OEA, mm -hmm. and also with the TR that you are searching, which one is it? And what happens going. is <laughs> that the... the um, well, the National Assembly... Is getting back the yeah. country. It's called the Inter-American Treaty of Reciprocal Assistance. All right, and It's the acronym and thing. the acronym is uh, TR. <laughs> also TR. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, it would be A A I A T R A. Well, I haven't heard it. Never in English. Always has been in. Well, in it's Spanish. called it's called the Rio Treaty. The Rio Treaty. Yeah, the Rio. Ah, because it's Rio. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. They, 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 that was signed in Rio. Yeah. Well, and I had the chance of participating in a podcast that we're talking about what were, you know, the previous cases. And some of them were mentioned with uh, Argentina and with uh, England. Why didn't the United States, you know, participate in helping Argentina? But the thing is that Argentina was supposedly to be the aggressor. Mm. So that was in case that you are being, you know, wow. Oh. <laughs> well, that was interesting. <laughs> that, that's See? how we know we're recording live here. Huh? <laughs> so they're trying to, you know. Yeah, somebody's trying to sabotage our podcast. Well, and I'm, I'm really concerned. You were in Medellin. And they were expecting what, 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 what could happen in Venezuela? Because the effects of the situation is not only Venezuela. Now we'll see that in Peru, that in Ecuador, in oh, Chile, everybody. in Argentina, everybody's asking for, you know, visa and any kind of, you know, well, regulation I was, of. I was in Colombia and I was in Ecuador and it was just really saddening to see Venezuelans asking for money, asking for food. Uh, in these countries, when uh, back in the 70s and 80s, no we received people from Peru, from Ecuador, for, from Colombia, um, that were going through tough times in that in in those in those days. Uh, but it was it was really humbling to see Venezuelans all over uh, in the streets asking for food, asking for money uh, with signs uh, saying, I'm Venezuelan, I need to take money back to my home country. I mean, it was it was uh, really impressive to see that. Well, it's, And sad. It's sad. It's yeah, well, that's sad. the word that I was going to use. It's really sad really to see sad. that situation. And we're exporting misery. The misery that we are experiencing here in Venezuela, we're exporting it to other countries that are developing. They're developing countries. They are not established whatsoever. And they're, they're in a good position also, because they have they still have food. You go into a supermarket, you find everything not like what we would see here. No, and there are other problems behind food. that yes. because you have crime rate races 
we have seen uh, news from uh, in, in in Peru. I think they were. Mm. I mean, uh, the, uh, an entire criminal band from Venezuela moved to you know to Peru, yeah. and also you have this situation of you know people being exploited because of the war, the conditions, prostitution. I mean, there was you know talking to taxi cabs, for example, and this is a very sad, very crude, and very horrible statistic. But uh, the taxi uh, drivers would say, yeah, prostitution uh, in Colombia has become cheaper because of Venezuelan prostitutes that oh. are going back. I mean, that's, that is, that, that's disgustingly uh, impressive. Totally, totally. And now that you're talking about prostitution, I would like to recall... Remember the Bachelet? Uh, the re, the, yeah, the Bachelet the review, report. The, the, yeah, report. the Office of uh, Human Rights. Well, uh, from the that US. Bachelet report especially, you know, uh, detects the situation of ladies that have to, you know, prostitute themselves in order to get some food. And the worst part is not that one, but one of the judges, this lady judge of the Supreme Court in Venezuela as well, like anywhere in the world, the people, you know, that chooses to uh, prostitute themselves, it's, you know, because they're whores. I mean, I don't know what's worse, the, 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 the situation related in the report or, you know, the answer given by who's supposed, you know, to, to be careful of what's going on in Venezuela, especially if you are, you know, in the higher court of the country yeah. so we have this situation at the time that not only in the regional system you know the uh, Latin American system but the world system that protects human rights are clear what's going on in Venezuela but what's so, going on now yeah so we have uh, a, a group of over 60 countries that want to discuss the problem in Venezuela and Lima Peru uh, because of course all these other countries in South America are suffering from the migration of Venezuelans uh, we have that there is a real treaty on board here in Venezuela we just need the support of these other countries because they have to be willing to come in here and and do uh, what they have to do and And, so, what, and what what they have to do? Yeah, it's, what it's, do they it's, have to do? It's tricky. It's very tricky. And we have the news that has uh, put us on front page in most uh, newspapers around the world is that there are new sanctions, uh, blockades, embargoes, uh, quarantines. There's all these other these words to uh, denote these new sanctions, but we don't know. The how effect. it's going to be implemented and the effects. And the effects. Well, well, the effects are going to be, everybody's well, going to be affected. You'll, you'll, you'll see right now that the prices are, again, you know, raising all the day. Every time, you know, any sanction, any embargo, any of these measures, the, the effect for the population is, well, the price is getting high. The services, well, we experience it right now. The Any service, call it electricity, water, regular water, uh, transit, um, safety. I mean, the police department, you know, they don't do any, 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 any role, any rounds. So all the effects are directly, you know, uncomfortable for the general population. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? So now this blockade or I don't know how quarantine to call it, or quarantine, I don't know how to call it on the Venezuelan on assets of the Venezuelan government in the U.S. that are directly uh, involved with Maduro's regime have been blocked. Um, this means they will not have a capacity to pay out a lot of their uh, governance. But at the same time, it, at the same time, as we are used to see. The agents of the regime, they use it, you know, try to to justify themselves. Like I just read some uh, tweet. I don't know if it's real or not because we have to check. But Delcy Rodriguez was mentioning that, well, uh, that uh, a, a boat, you know, a, a load of uh, medicine or uh, food was, yeah. you know, stopped in uh, Panama Canal. But and then I received another tweet or another um, 
picture that mentions that the canal authority mentions that well it's not true so we're well we're, they're of course trying going to try to politicize this uh, well it's a political uh, measure but they're going to try and make it seem like um, no medicines or food are going to enter Venezuela and that's going to affect people here and bring upon a much higher humanitarian uh, crisis or what they call a situation a complex humanitarian situation so uh, it, you know it is troublesome because when uh, uh, this regime or Maduro's government or Chavismo stops having money to make uh, their governance, which is how they've been doing so far, they become more repressive. And when we see that they become more repressive and the crisis deepens itself, because we are going to see collateral damages from this um, blockade. I mean, economists have said it. And so, I mean, it's going to affect private sector as well. Um, then we're we might see a more repressive government as well. So, well, who's more. to say this will work well, or not? And, it's and, a and, risk. and it could be more repressive because the more you know tougher you get towards civil society, you forget or seem to forget another cases. Mm -hmm. Like a sense. Yeah. How long has been you know detained without any you know proper uh, procedure, uh, without any proper you know assistance? Well, the, the videos remember yeah. one year ago, the video that when you know when he was you know captured, yeah. he was drugged, he was you know all out of himself. Yeah. The, this guy who was you know killed this uh, from the from the army and that they 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 implement more and Some more and more torture torture um you know unjustful uh persecutions we're gonna we might see more of that well, we might not see another venezuelan it's, focus it's, <laughs> no we'll see we'll see it we'll see it we'll see it they'll see it we'll make it yes. and also I was doing doing some research and I'll see the situation in uh, in Russia and mm. what's going on at, at this moment in Russia is not different than this, than in here that you know you have some people you allow them make them money so you have this new kind of you know new rich people and then the you, new oligarchs yes mm -hmm. the, the, the Russian oligarchs but then you choose one of those that could be you know more more uh, prominent, visible yeah. prominent and you just could his have head off mm. and then you ask the others to come and you know to negotiate and that it's mafia guys it's mafia and that's what's so tricky about Venezuela because it's not just uh, one guy it's mm. several guys it's like a hydra you cut one head off like to the, come out like the medieval yeah. times that you have some some you know portions of the of power of, of power and you know you don't I don't deal with you I respect what you do but you respect what I do and that happening with you know the judicial system, with the legislative, with the with the states, with the counties, with the That's why you know, it's food, so and, 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 yeah. and the prices go high and high and high. And I saw some work of you about it. And well, we'll see what brings us. Dollarized. You have to have dollars to buy stuff now. Uh, well, you could talk about dollarizing the economy of Venezuela. Or, yeah. Technically, technically, it's not because you're not taking, you know, all the account into dollars. But the thing is that we are Bolivar less. I mean, doesn't the, the Bolivar has a currency? It doesn't worth at all. If you receive a payment, let's say a number hundred to say hundred million or hundred thousand, by the end of the day or by the end of the week, you'll buy. It worth less than twenty, twenty thousand, or whatever. It, it loses the the, the 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 capacity of buying stuff. The IMF said this is the worst inflation in history, unprecedented, in a unprecedented. country without any war. At yeah, all. a country without a war. We have the highest inflation. We have warlike uh, situation. Uh, yeah, the economy consequences, and uh, yeah, it's a de-bolivarization. I like that term that you came up with. Yes, it's not a dollarization. It's a de-bolivarization. De and it's let's sad. also then you'll have let's let's finishing up with this. Uh, well, yeah, because it's complex. We are living in a complex situation. We don't know how these uh, sanctions are going to affect. Um, The regime, Guaido, the economy, Venezuela, uh, 
But as any move, a whole, any move, you so can you don't lose some stuff. You could lose some stuff. So uh, today, for our Venezuelan slang, uh, uh, slang or a phrase, no, proverb, or proverb, proverb, we came up with uh, that we might end up with. Sin el chivo y sin el, y sin el mecate. In and English, it will be. In English, it, this is a it very rhymes. cute one because it rhymes. We would be left without the goat and without the rope. So that means that, you know, by trying these all these maneuvers, it's a risk and we might end up with nothing. Well, we'll hope it doesn't happen. We we'll hope we will, we will recover the situation, the country, and we'll be here to tell the guys, you know, to follow us how we're doing and how we're recovering. Please follow us. Uh, remind us of your uh, social media. Cultura Jurídica ORG. We're, we're, you know, posting this with the Cultura Jurídica page. And, well, we reach more than uh, 1,000 followers. That's perfect. Oh, yes, that's perfect. Wow, wow. Uh, and you can reach me in alternos.la uh, at alternos.la on Twitter and Oshlenker News. Uh, that's my Twitter account. And, um, yeah, we'll be here next time in Venezuela and Focus. Bye-bye. Hasta luego. Chao.